Hi there guys, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and in this video, I'll be showing you the best features of the Samsung Galaxy A50s. Now I've already made a dedicated video for the tips and tricks section where I talked about many things which I won't be covering in this video. So definitely check out that video, link will be in the description. Now with that said, the first or the most highlighting feature about this phone is an in-display fingerprint scanner. Now Samsung is trying to brag a lot about this in-display fingerprint scanner, well it works but it takes like a second to unlock the phone. So overall, it works, but it is slow and I wish it was a bit more faster. Now the next best thing about this phone would be its display. This phone has a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display with Full HD Plus resolution with 85.1% screen to body ratio. As it's an AMOLED display, viewing angles are great, colors are saturated, blacks are truly blacks, and even the sunlight legibility is pretty good. It's simply the best display out there. Next, this phone also supports fast charging and comes with a fast charger inside the box with a maximum output of 15 watts. Here's a quick preview. Now the next best thing about this phone is definitely performance. This phone sports a Samsung Exynos 9611 octa-core processor with Mali G72 MP3 GPU. It has 4 Cortex-A73 cores along with 4 Cortex-A53 cores. These are the benchmark scores. Whether it's for regular usage or for gaming, this phone will definitely suffice you. Next, this phone has some pretty good cameras as well. On the rear, it is a 48 megapixel primary camera with f2.0 aperture and for selfies, it is a 32 megapixel camera with f2.0 aperture. Now these are some sample shots. Now going on next, this phone also has space and lock feature. It is fast but not as fast as Oppo and Vivo phones. In good lighting conditions, it works really well. It unlocks the phone in less than a second but we can still see the lock screen. Even in low lighting conditions, it works and it is kinda fast, like it takes about a second to unlock the phone. In complete darkness, it's more of a hit or a miss. You have to bring your phone close to your face for it to work properly. Overall, face unlock works and it's definitely much more usable than the in-display fingerprint scanner. Next, this phone also comes with a wide-angle camera on the rear. These are some sample shots. Next, we have live focus mode. This is another fancy name for rear camera portrait mode on Samsung phones. Unlike on other phones, on this phone, you can actually change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture. And even after taking a picture, you can change the background blur effect. Very few phones offer this feature. These are some sample shots. Next we have spinning background. Now just like the name suggests, it will give you a spinning effect in the background of a portrait shot. You can also edit the intensity of the spin using the slider below. Next we have zoom background. Just like the spin effect, using this feature, you get a zoom effect. And once again, you can change the intensity using the slider below. Next, we have color point. Now, once you enable this feature, subject is in color and the background is in black and white, you get a pretty cool looking effect. Even this feature works only on portrait shots and there needs to be a sufficient distance between the subject and the background. Next, we have live focus for selfie. Now, this is another fancy name by Samsung for portrait selfie. Using this feature, you can take portrait selfies and on this phone, you can also change the amount of background blur effect you want before taking a picture. These are some sample shots. Next we have wide angle selfie. Now the front camera on this phone has a wide angle lens, but by default, it crops it to give you a regular size selfie. If you want a much wider selfie, you can get it with just a click of a button. Next we have AR emoji which is Samsung's version of Apple's Animoji. First, you need to create AR emoji by taking a picture of yourself. Then you can customize it according to your preference. You can change the skin tone, hairstyle, beard style. You can literally change everything about the emoji. Then you can take pictures of your emoji making weird expressions. You can also stick the emoji to your face like a sticker and then take pictures. You can also share your custom emoji with anyone, anywhere directly from the Samsung keyboard app. Next we have AR stickers. Using this feature, you can put different kind of stickers to your face in real time and then take pictures with it. It's a pretty cool feature and the amount of stickers you have depends on the phone you're using. Next this phone also offers electronic image stabilization while recording video. 
Next, this phone also supports super slow motion video recording. And here's the sample footage. In this mode, we can only record for few seconds. We can also edit the super slow motion to make it look even better. Next, we have slow motion video recording, where we have more control over the duration. Once you are done recording, you can also edit the slow mo video according to your preference. Next, we have hyperlapse which is just a Samsung name for time-lapse. Next, we have Scene Optimizer. It's like AI mode for Samsung phones. It is enabled by default all the time and you can disable it very easily by a click of a button. This feature intelligently detects the scene and optimizes each shot to give you picture-perfect composition. These are some sample shots. Next we have Bixby Vision which is just like Google Lens with some additional features. It can do a regular image search, it can extract text, it can search for products online, translate other languages and has support for compatible apps like Amazon Assistant, Adobe Scan and many more. This is a unique feature currently available only on the Samsung phones. Now going on next you also get an NFC on this phone which can be really useful for pairing new Bluetooth devices and simply connecting to them faster. It's not a big deal but very few phones offer it and that makes it a big deal. Now going on next, this phone also has Samsung Pay. Just like on its flagship phones, even this phone comes with a fully functioning Samsung Pay. This is my all time favorite feature on Samsung phones. You can add your credit card and debit card information on the Samsung Pay app and make transactions with just your phone even when there is a swiping machine. I wish all the Android phones had this feature. Next we have always on display. And just like the name suggests, once you enable this feature, display of your phone is always on even when you lock your phone. It will display time, date and notification icons. You can keep it always on or turn it on only at a specific time. You can double tap the notification icon to open it, double tap on the clock to go through different face widgets. You can even control the music player from the always on display. You can also change the clock style, add new widgets and customize it more. As this phone comes with an AMOLED display, it won't affect the battery life and you get a very cool look. Next we have navigation gestures and Samsung likes to call it full screen gestures. Just enable this feature and the navigation bar is replaced with three lines. You can swipe from the right side to go back a step, swipe from the center to go home, swipe from the left side for recent apps. You can swipe and hold at the center for Google Assistant. Personally, I like the implementation of MIUI on Xiaomi phones and Android Q. Next we have split screen mode. To open any application in split screen mode, you need to first open that application, go to the recent apps page, click on the app icon and select open in split screen. Then that application will open in a split screen and you can select the secondary application from your recent apps or you can go to the home screen and select the secondary application from there. You can find this feature on all Android phones and this is how you can use it on this phone. Next we have pop-up view, which opens an application in a floating window. Opening an app in pop-up view is similar to split screen mode. Once you open an application in a pop-up view, you can change its transparency, make it a bit transparent. You can minimize it to a floating bubble, just like Facebook chat heads, maximize it or even close it. I would recommend you not to use this feature as it is resource intensive. Next we have smart pop-up view. This feature allows you to open applications in a pop-up view every time you get a notification from that application. First, you need to enable this feature for the desired application. Once again, it's better not to use this feature. Next, we have night mode. This is one of my favorite features on this phone. Once you enable it, most of the UI elements change color from light to dark or black. You can just turn it on from the notification toggles or schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time. Using this mode strains your eyes less at night, saves battery and definitely looks pretty cool because of the AMOLED display. Now going on next, we can even hide that notch. Now once you enable this feature, area beside the notch is completely blacked out, status bar is moved below. Because of the AMOLED display, you won't even see the notch. Now going on next, we have palm swipe to capture. Now before I show you what this feature does, let me show you how to take a normal screenshot. For that, simply press the volume down and power button both at the same time. Once you do that, your phone will take a screenshot. Now for some reason, if you're not able to do that and want an easy way, you can enable this feature called palm swipe to capture. Once you enable this feature, 
you can simply swipe the display of your phone with your palm left or right to take a screenshot. Sometimes it doesn't work but most of the time it works without any problems. Next we have smart alert. Once you enable this feature, every time you pick up your phone, your phone will vibrate if you have a missed call or a message. Next we have easy mute. Once you enable this feature, you can easily mute incoming calls or alarms by placing your hand on your phone or by turning your phone face down. Here's a quick preview. Next we have one handed mode. Now once you enable this feature and swipe from the bottom left or right corner of the screen, screen size will shrink, your phone will become much more usable with a single hand. Once you are in this mode, you can click the arrow button to switch the screen left side or right side and click in an empty area to go full screen. If you don't like the gesture, you can select the second option and click the home button three times to use the phone in one handed mode. Next we have accidental touch prevention which is just a fancy name from Samsung for pocket mode. Once you enable this feature, it will prevent accidental touches in closed spaces like pockets and bags. Next we have lift to wake. Now this feature is self explanatory. Once you enable this feature, you can simply lift your phone to wake it up. This can be quite useful if you are using face unlock feature. You just need to raise your phone, it will see your face and then unlock your phone. Next we have double tap to wake. Once again, even this feature is self explanatory. You can double tap the screen to wake it up. So once you enable this feature, just lock your phone and double tap the screen. It wakes up the screen and if you are using face unlock, once again it sees your face and unlocks the phone immediately. Next we have smart stay. Once you enable this feature, your phone's display will stay on as long as you are using it. This is a really useful feature for people who read a lot on your phone. Let's say you are reading an article or a book on your phone, then the display won't turn off at screen timeout. Next we have digital well being. Now this is actually a feature from Google so it should be on all the Android phones. Now this feature will record all your activity on your phone like how long you are using your phone, which apps you are using a lot and how many times you have opened a particular application. So this feature gives you all that information and you can see which apps you open frequently and which apps you are addicted to. You can also restrict app usage by using this feature. Next we have wind down. Now this feature is built into the digital well-being application but it has its own unique features. Now this feature wind down will help you sleep quickly at night. You can turn it on manually or schedule it to automatically turn on at a specific time. Once you set it up and it's turned on, it changes the screen to grayscale that's black and white and blocks notification. It can also turn on do not disturb mode so you won't be disturbed with annoying notifications. Next we have flash notifications. Once you enable this feature, every time you get a notification or a call, flashlight blinks to give you a visual indication. It's good when you need it, but it can be quite annoying. Next we have auto call recording. Now this feature allows you to record calls automatically on your phone whether you get a call or make a call. You can enable this feature from the phone dialer settings. Next we have blue light filter. Now just like the name suggests. Once you enable this feature, it puts a warm tint on the screen and filters the blue light, which is supposed to help you sleep better at night. We can also change the intensity of the filter using the slider. We can also schedule it to turn on and turn off automatically at a specific time. Now going on next, we have the option to change the font on this phone. Usually most Android phones don't give you this option, but on this phone, you can change the font. By default you get 3 different fonts and if you are not happy with them, you can download more from the Samsung store. Next we have easy mode. Now if this phone is going to be used by some elderly people, then you can enable easy mode for them. Now once you enable this feature, everything on your phone will be enlarged. All the app icons on the home screen and app drawer increase in size. Even the text size gets scaled up to make it more visible for elderly people. Next we have game launcher. Now once you enable this feature, it will create a folder called game launcher on your home screen and you can keep all your games in that folder. Now from this interface you can change your performance mode. You can set it to balanced, power saver or even high performance. So once you set up your power profile every time you open a game, your phone will automatically switch to that power profile. Beside that we also get the option to mute sound for all games at once. Now that's not all. Once you open any game that's listed in the game launcher, 
you'll see extra buttons on the navigation bar. One button at the top to lock the screen and another button at the bottom for extra options. Once you click it, you get additional options for do not disturb mode, blocking calls, taking a screenshot, recording video and lot more crazy stuff like that. Now going on next, we have swipe to call or send message. Once you enable this feature in the default phone dialer application, you can simply swipe left or right on a contact or a call log to make a call or send a message. It's not a great feature, but a very nice shortcut that's available only on the Samsung phones. Next we have dual messenger, which is like dual apps for Samsung. Using this feature, you can have two Snapchat accounts, two Facebook accounts, or even two WhatsApp accounts on the same phone. Now, those features might seem awesome, but it only works with few applications. Like if you want to use two Paytm accounts on the same phone, you can't do it using this feature. With that said, if you really want to do it, like if you want two Paytm accounts on the same Samsung phone, you can try using secure folder feature. In your default phone dialer, we have a feature called caller ID and spam protection, and it just does what it says. Every time you get a call from any unknown number, it tries to trace it, give you a name and will try to intimate you if it is a spam call. I'll definitely recommend you to use this feature. Now the next best feature on this phone is the secure folder. Now this feature has a simple name called secure folder but offers you a lot of things. For starters, you can hide files in it, you can create your secure notes, you can even drag and drop applications into this folder and use them as dual applications. And if you have any application with security as priority, like net banking applications, you can put all those applications in the secure folder and make them more secure. It is basically like a secure box inside your phone where you can hide files and keep applications safer. Now this is an awesome feature, but it is very resource intensive. So if you don't have a high end Samsung phone, I will not recommend you to use this feature. Instead, try third party applications. Now going on next, this phone also has Dolby Atmos sound enhancement. You can enable it by using the toggles or by going to the sound settings. Once you enable it, you have different sound profiles like auto, movies, music and voice. And depending upon the sound profile, you will get different audio experience. Right now, this feature is only available if you're using a headset. Now going on next, this phone even comes with Samsung themes or just the themes. You literally have hundreds of themes to choose from, both free and paid and you can completely change the look and feel of your phone. Starting from wallpapers to UI elements to app icons, it literally changes everything. Now going on next, we have maximum power saving mode. On previous Samsung phones, it was called as ultra power saving mode and once you enable this feature, it will decrease the screen brightness, set speed limiter, restrict background network usage, limit the number of apps that you can use and apply a dark theme. On the whole, it does all these things to improve the standby time of your phone. Now even in this mode, you can still use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and mobile data and use some regular applications like YouTube, Facebook and even use the camera application. If you are on a very long journey, just enable this mode and you can have great battery life. Next we have kids mode. You can access it from the notification toggles. Now the first time you try to open it, it might try to download a brand new application. But once everything is set and done, this is the user interface that you get. Using parental controls, you can set daily playtime. You can also check out the daily usage of your kid. You can check out their complete activity. You can restrict the number of apps that they can use, contacts they can see and music they can listen to. It completely transforms your phone into a brand new phone, which is safe for your kid to use. Now going on next, we have lock screen stories. If you want to see something interesting and useful information every time you see the lock screen, just enable this feature. Once done, every time you try to unlock the phone by going to the lock screen, you will see a different story. Next we have Bixby routines. These are all automated tasks that can be configured to have the best user experience. For example, you can configure your phone such that it automatically turn off mobile data and turn on Wi-Fi once you reach your home or office and do stuff like that. It is just an automation application that is built into the phone. Next we have Wake Up Bixby with the power button. Now once you enable this feature from the advanced settings, you can simply press and hold the power button to trigger Bixby. Once it is triggered, you can ask your question and it will give you an answer. Unlike other phones, you need to press and hold the power button until you complete your question. Now going on next, this phone also comes with a dedicated SD card slot. If the internal storage is not sufficient for you, you can always add in an SD card and expand the storage. It's not a big deal, but if you need extra storage, that dedicated SD card slot will come in handy. Now going on next, we can also reduce animations on this phone. Now for some reason, if you want to reduce animations and by reducing the CPU load, then you can do it on this phone 
by just disabling this toggle. Even if you reduce animations, there are still some animations going on. And for some reason, if you want to completely remove animations, you can do it from the accessibility settings. Personally, I'll stick with animations, even at a cost of performance and battery life. Now going on next, we can also disable fast charging. Now this phone, as you might have already known, comes with fast charging, supports fast charging and comes with a fast charger inside the box. But for some reason, maybe for a prank or something else, if you want to disable fast charging, you can do it from the battery settings. Now going on next, this phone also has Widevine L1 support. That means you can stream high definition videos from Netflix and Amazon Prime on this phone. This is kind of a big deal if you watch a lot of video content on your phone. So guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. If I missed out on anything important, do let me know by commenting below this video and definitely check out my video on the tips and tricks section where I'll be talking about many things which I didn't cover in this video. By the way guys, if you're planning to buy this phone, use the link in the description. It always helps the channel. And if you want us to make any specific video or if you have any questions, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and we will try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off. Have a nice day.